All right, so what we're gonna talk about now is we are going to look at the arm. So we're gonna talk about the upper arm, the forearm, as well as the hand, and then what makes up our shoulder or pectoral girdle. So when we talk about these bones, we're gonna talk about pectoral girdle first, which is basically what makes up your shoulder. The one bone in your upper arm, the two bones in your forearm, and then all the bones of your hand. So this is just gonna kind of sit here so that way we can look at those individuals. So when we look at these bones, the first thing I want you to know is the two bones that make up the shoulder, also known as the pectoral girdle. So there's two bones that actually make up the shoulder and they kind of sit like this. This one's on the front, this one's on the back. The first one is your clavicle. So the clavicle you guys probably know as your collarbone. So that is one of the bones that makes up the shoulder girdle. The second bone is the scapula. So the scapula is, if you thought, think about scapular region, that's your shoulder blade. So this is your shoulder blade, it's the scapula. And the scapula has basically two important parts that I'm gonna need you to know. The first one is this very pointed part, which is called the acromion process. So the acromion process, if you think about it, your bones are sitting like this. So this is the lateral side of your shoulder here. So when you're feeling the front, you're gonna feel the clavicle, but you're also gonna feel kind of this bony prominence on the back of your shoulder. That is the acromion process. When you give shots, you're actually looking to feel that acromion process to determine how far down you need to give that injection into the muscle. So that acromion process is one of those things I need you to know. The other thing I need you to know on the scapula is the fact that, again, we have a ball and socket joint. So if you think about the humerus here, you notice that it's kind of a ball shaped. That's the ball of the ball and socket. This piece right here, this round piece, is kind of indented. That is the socket portion. It's called the glenoid cavity. So on the scapula, the acromion process is this bony pro prominence, and then the glenoid cavity is the socket of the ball and socket that is your shoulder. So those two bones, again, make up the shoulder girdle, the clavicle and the scapula. Now we're gonna move into the arm itself. So here we've got our arm laid out so you can kind of see what it looks like. So this is the first one we're gonna talk about, which is the humerus, okay? So when we look at the humerus, the first thing I want you to notice is the length of it. When we talk about the femur later, one of the big differences between the upper limb and the lower limb is the length and the thickness of the bones. Your legs carry a lot more weight and they tend to be longer. So the bones in your legs are gonna be longer and thicker. The bones in your arm are going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner. So this first one is the humerus and it's actually when you look at these bones here it's the thickest of the three three arm bones. So this one here has the head here it's the ball of the ball and socket joint and then down here is what we call your funny bone. So if you have ever hit your funny bone what you'll notice is your arm is actually slightly bent when it's slightly bent, this part right here, which is, which is an indentation, is exposed. And what's running through there is nerves. So what you're hitting is nerves. That's why it hurts so bad. So that is what we're actually talking about when we talk about that funny bone. Is it's actually that indentation on the uh, humerus itself. So that's our humerus, okay? Again, look for the ball on that bone to determine that it's the humerus. The next two bones are the radius and the ulna, and I'm gonna put them a certain direction because there are things up here that's gonna determine which one is which. So the first thing that I want you to look at when we're looking at this is when we're looking at this bone here, this is the thumb, this is the pinky. When we look at these, the radius is closest to the thumb, and the ulna is closest to the pinky. That's one way to remember it. The other way, when you're looking at these two individual bones, you'll notice that they are a little bit shorter than your humerus is, but also it's their heads that make them unique. So when we look at the radius, the easiest way to tell the radius is by looking at the head of the radius. If you've ever had a math class, the radius of a circle, the radius has a circular head. So you notice it looks like a circle. The ulna here, if we place it on its side, the head makes the shape of a U. So U for ulna. Again, these are gonna be relatively short compared to the bones in the leg. They're the thinner of the bones. Again, radius, circular head. Ulna has the U-shaped notch at the head. Humerus, again, has that ball of the ball and socket. Let's talk about the hand. 
Okay, so this is the hand here. It's basically, it would be the left hand that's sitting like this. If I flip it over, it's gonna look like that. So when we're looking at the bones of the hand, the wrist bones are all of these really, really tiny bones. Remember, the bones of the wrist are gonna be these short bones. These are called the carpals. So all these little short bones are the carpals, which think of carpal tunnel, okay? Carpal tunnel is issue with the wrist. Carpals are your wrist bones. The bones right next to it or right above it are the bones that are actually in the palm of your hand. Those bones are called the meta carpals. So carpals and then metacarpals. So the metacarpals are the ones that are in the palm of your hand. The rest of the bones are going to be the phalanges. So all of the bones in your fingers are going to be the phalanges. So I want you to notice something about your index finger through your pinky. Each one of these has three phalanges. So when you take a look at the bends in your index finger, notice you have one piece here, one piece here, and one piece here. Let's look at the pinky. Same thing, one piece here, one piece here, one piece here. So three different bones, right? The thumb is different. If you count, you have one, two. So we have two bones in our thumb, two phalanges in our thumb, and three bones in each one of our other fingers, okay? So all of these are gonna be the phalanges, the ones that are in the palm of your hand are the metacarpals, and then your wrist bones are called the carpals.